Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Then another aspect, this is very important aspect in protein structures, the solvent accessibility. The name itself tells this is divided into two solvents and accessible. What is accessible? Reachable, like, like, like how far we can reach, right? Whether it is a very close, so we can reach more, or how far we can in contact, right? So, what is a solvent with respect to a solvent, right? Okay, we have protein structures, right? If there is a solvent, right? how far the solvent can reach each atoms or each residues in a particular protein right so based on that you can define the solvent accessible surface area because the area we tell because how much area they can overlap right? this is what we call the accessible surface area so you can define this as the locus of the center of the solvent molecule and this it rolls over the wonderful surface of the protein so we have the protein different residues and they got different atoms we can represent these atoms in overlock, overlocking spheres, right? And if you have a sphere, then we take a solvent molecule and we will roll the solvent molecule on this protein and see how far they are in contact. That contact is called the contact area, and how far the center of the solvent molecule rolls on the Van der Waals surface, then that is called the accessible surface area. Usually, we take a solvent, water is in which environment? Water environment, right? The protein is in water environment. So, we consider the protein's environment, then we take the solvent as water, right? So, we can take the water, right? And you can see the radius of 1.4 angstrom, right? Because of the environment of any, any proteins. So, then what to do? So, you can see the solute, solute molecule. Solute molecule, what is solute molecule here? It is a protein, right? So, you can see the protein, this is a solute molecule. You can see the interlocking spheres. So, you can see this is the, the, the interlocking spheres right here and we can assign the different Van der Waals radii. What are the atoms present in water in the protein? Carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, nitrogen, nitrogen oxygen, 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 sulfur right. Hydrogen. So, based on the atoms we have the Van der Waals radii. So, each atom we can have the different Van der Waals radii. So, they are interlocking spheres. Now, what to do? Right, you can now roll the solvent molecule. Right on the along the envelope of this Van der Waals surface, right? You can see the Van der Waals surface here, right? So this is the water molecule, right? This is the water, right? Of 1.4 angstrom. So you roll the water molecule on the Van der Waals surface. And from that, now you can see the radius of the surface. This is equal to R plus R uh, the solvent molecule, and you can calculate the accessible surface area of atom of radius R, right? You can see. This R, R, this is a area of the surface of a sphere of radius R. But this R equal to R plus R, the solvent molecule. On each point, with the center of the molecule, are in contact with the solute molecule, right? In contact with the solute molecule, without penetrating to other atoms, right? So if you have this water molecule, which are rolling around, how far they can penetrate into each atoms, right? Depend based on the Van der Waals radius of this each, each atom in a, in a protein. So, that area we call as solvent accessible surface area, right. So, we have the water molecule, now you uh, roll on this molecule. So, this is the contact, how much you can contact, this is the contact area. Now, how much you can penetrate into the Van der Waals surface, that you can get the accessible surface area, that can be that is the maximum surface area you can accessible by the solvent with the, with the atoms. So, there are several methods, this is the principle how they estimate the solvent accessibility, there are various methods to calculate the solvent accessible surface area of each atoms to based on the different algorithms. So, I show some of the algorithms, one is access, right? this is the one uh, first introduced in the literature in 1978, actually started in 1971, Lee and Richards, right? they proposed the concept of solvent accessibility and the program they developed in 1978. So, they used this inf uh, information how the protein uh, can be accessible by a sol solvent molecule. Later on they refined right uh, in 1993 and they developed in excess right for, uh, to get the accessible surface area of all atoms. Likewise, there are several other uh, methods like ASC or uh, DSSP or get area. 
earlier we discussed the DSSP right for the second structure of proteins right. So, they combine the second structure as well as solvent accessibility right at the one file you can get all the data. So, these are the some of the aspects of different methods. Why do we need different methods right the various aspects. So, there are several algorithms available to calculate the accessible surface area of all atoms and residues in a protein. So, the major uh, programs are access which are the one which are developed early in the literature maybe 1970s and followed by DSSP, NXS, AIC, Gateria and so on. Uh, currently we have several other algorithms are also available in the literature. So, we look into these different algorithms there are some advantages and some disadvantages. For example, if you look at DSSP, so you can easily use standalone program is available, but it can give you the actual surface area for only the residues. So, we cannot get the data for the atoms right. So, if you take the atom wise, so it is no, but if you look if you use the n axis right, n axis right you can use you can get the atom wise one right, but here there is no online calculations or database, but n axis you need to get the license that you have to write the copy uh, assignment, assignment and then you have to send and get the license and then you can use it. And here this will give you only the secondary structure, no information regard uh, only the accessibility, but no secondary structure. Look at the DSSP, it will give you the ASA plus secondary structure. So, this advantage of using DSSP, you can get the secondary structure and solvent accessibility simultaneously when you run the program. So, AAC is another program. So, in this case you need to edit or manipulate these files right depending upon your input files right. So, you can edit here you can say the uh, you can change the probe radius you can change the uh, the Van der Waals radius and source code is also available. So, this for free they will give the source code. So, in the get area so get standalone is not available, but you can get the online. So, if you give the PDB right then you can get all the data it give the polar non polar area right I can give atomized surface area right right, but you can also use the by manual editing you can change the Van der Waals radius and other parameters. So, some program you cannot change anything right some of the case only you can get the standalone some case only you can do the online right some cases you can manipulate the change to your uh, default parameters right and the DSSP provides both secondary structure as well as the uh, solvent accessibility ok these are the references this is Lee and Richards. Right. So, this is the output obtained from the DSSP right the example I show the ex, uh, output uh, from the DSSP ok DSSP is the developed by the caption center right the published in uh, 1983 by in biopolymers right. So, here if you see the data ok here the data starts from here right this is the residue number there are two numbers one is based on the PDB file, one is actual register number from the Uniprod. So, you have the two numbers. So, here you get the amino acid sequence K, V, F, E, and so on, right. And here this is the assignment of secondary structure. In this case, A, C, C, this is the accessible surface area. When you look into the accessible surface area, right, can you see these numbers and tell something from the accessible surface area that which residues are buried, which residues are exposed? Right, if you see the numbers, some of them are very high. For example, here this is 146 and so 114, right. These residues are exposed, right? They are at the surface. So, for example, this residue, if you see this arginine and you can see this the glutamic acid, right? These residues are at the, at the exposed. Then some residues, for example, they are 0 and 1, right? What is the meaning of this 0 and 1? They are buried, right. So, in this case if you see this solution alanine, so these residues are buried in the interior fine. So, if you have any PDB code you can download DSSP, you can standard programming is available, you can execute easily just one line command right if you give the DSSP and you give the uh, your uh, PDB ID and if you give the output file name we will get it right it is just a one line command you can get the data for the DSSP right. But the only disadvantage is it will give only the Rest device accessible surface area, otherwise it is it is very fast. This is another program, it is called the get area. Here you can use the online version, but standalone is not available, but you can manipulate the probe radius and other parameters and you can get the data for all atoms, right. For example, if you want to use the PDB file, 
right you can give the PDB here I give 2 PTL dot PDB right. So, water molecule that is 1.4. So, here if you will email address and you get the output right and submit for analysis right then you will get the data. So, if you look into this uh, data so each residue this is a total surface area and they, they group into different atoms based on the polar and the polar. So, amount total 2 1 2 right accept surface area angstrom square up polar is about 98. Then also they classify into backbone and side chain ok this is the backbone and this is a side chain as well as this ratio. Then based on this area they classify this is out or in right what is the meaning of out? This exposed. So, values are very high this values are very high so they are out. So, here this is less right here this is less and they are the interior of the protein. So, they can classify into either a uh, interior of the protein or at the surface fine. So, now you can also get the this area for each atoms right here this is for each residue. So, here you can see even for this glutamic acid. So, they have for each atoms right you can see the area right for each atom in a, in a residue. So, this each atom type where this is C A B or C B B right. So, you can see this is the backbone right and you can see the different atom types and you can see whether this is sulphur right and the aromatic right aliphatic. So, you can see the area for the based on the different atom types. This is overall you can see the overall polar area and the polar area right and this is the total area also there are number of atoms which are the surface which are at the buried. So, you get all the information right because it will give you the data for each each atom this is easy to use. But now the issue is most of the biologists right they find it difficult to interpret the data. So, in this case instead of giving numbers if you provide the kind of figures right so that they can understand which residues which are at the surface and which residues are the buried then it will be very helpful right to interpret the results. So, we developed data, the database called ASA view right it is it we develop database as well as an algorithm to represent the solvent acceptable surface area. It is a characteristic characteristic two dimensional plot kind of spiral plot which will give you some information right. So, that we can view the figures and then get the information right. So, how to do that? So, here the various aspects one is different types of atoms different types of residues right. So, here we consider only the residues not different atoms right. So, what are the different types of residues in your protein? Polar, Polar residues non polar residues charge residues right. So, we can show specifically ok these are charge residues or the hydrophobic residues polar residues and so on. Then they these residues they have different surface area some of them are less or some of them are more. You can give the circles with the different sizes right based on the surface area. So, we want to give the plots right in the form of the spirals as well as the bar chart just give you the actual values right for each residue in a particular protein. You can use these online plots for any PDB ID or you can upload your PDB right and you can get the, the, the plots ok. Now, I will show you the plot. So, here this is a plot for a particular protein. We got different colors and the different colors represent for the different types of amino acids likewise the, the blue right. So, you can see the blue this is the K 32 this is the positive charge residues and the green. So, here you can see the green this is mainly for the polar residues right based on the notations and you can see the gray, gray is mainly for the hydrophobic residues valine or alanine and the yellow is mainly for this cysteine residues I do not find any cysteine here. And you can see the size some of them are very small and some of them are very big that represent the, the relative accessible surface area of each residues. From this one can we guess which residues prefer to be the interior which residues are in the surface. Mainly if you see the non polar residues ok see the stretch of this grey colors inside the core. So, most of the hydrophobic residues right these are the hydrophobic residues right. right which are mainly at the interior of the core. In the surface if you see mainly the polar residues and you can see the charge residues positive charge and the negative charge residues right you can see the distribution of these residues right at the interior of the protein or at the surface. This is another plot this is a bar plot which give you the value for each residue. 
for example, we give the starting from the 1 to n that n terminal to the uh, c terminal we will give the data. If you look into this plot here also you can see they continuously not with the high ASA or low ASA. Right? For example, if you see this residue and here you can see they are distributed differently in the sequence right here this residues, but when you look into this number they are buried in the interior. So, comparing this plot and this and this plot right some residues which are far away in the sequence they are come close to each other right and they are they are placed at the interior of the protein. This also supports this uh, hydrophobic model right, so that they collapse and then they form the core the hydrophobic residues and the other polar residues which are at the surrounded by this hydrophobic residues to make the interactions right with the water as well as with the other residues. So, here and there if you see these hydrophobic residues, but they are very uh, less uh, uh, ASA, but they are mainly in the interior of the protein. So, we have the values we can plot either you can make spiral plot or you can make the bar chart to see how these residues are distributed right based on accessible surface area. So, we have the web server. So, you can uh, it can take any PDB ID right this you can get the PDB ID. So, if you get plot right then you can uh, see that what are the types of plots you require. So, depending upon which one you want the PDF version or the any relative values whatever, whatever you need. So, right you can see the graph this spiral plot and you can see the bar chart. In addition, we use the actual values. Okay, if you see this one, again, this is actual surface area. Okay, this is output from the DSSP. We give the link so that they can uh, the users can use and they can see the exact values for each residues in the in the in their uh, particular protein of interest. Right? Fine. Here, this is the value for each residues. Right? This is only the uh, ASA values. So now, if you look into this different residues, for example, if you compare glycine and the lysine. How many atoms in glycine? Four, so only where the heavy atoms only four, only the main atoms. If you, if you take alanine, it is five. If you take arginine or tryptophan, that you have more number of atoms. So, when you do the residue wise accessible surface area, they add up. They do it for all the atoms and finally, add up then you give for the residue. In this case, there is a bias of this residues, some of them are small, some of them are big. Right. In this in this case, we need to normalize how far a pro, the residue is accessible. Right. In this case, you can calculate the percentage accessibility. That's the ratio between the accessible surface area, right, which are compared with 3D structures, as well as the extended state. What's the meaning of extended state? Fully the maximum it can be accessible. Right. In this case. There are two different ways. One is you can take this uh, trinucleotide tripeptide or a uh, trinucleotide, right, and you can use this uh, concept to get the accessible surface area. And the most easiest one is they take the conformation glycine x glycine or alanine x alanine. Why they use glycine x glycine? Doesn't have side chain. Yeah, so. glycine has no side chain. So in this case, if it is central residues, any residue, this is highly accessible because neighboring two residues, they don't have the any side chain. So, look at the glycine x glycine in all the proteins and see the conformation and from that they can take either the highest value or they can take the maximum value, the average value right. From that they will see this will be the probable accessible surface area for any residue when they are extended state right. These are the values for the 20 residues and as you see glycine has the lowest one and you can see the tryptophan or the arginine right you can see the highest values. Now you, have, now, you can get the ratio one from the 3D structures you run the program and any other programs what are the programs we discussed in access, access, AAC, get area right or DSSP you get it for the folded state and access state values we know then you divide that right then you will get the percentage accessibility right the percentage ASA right. So, that is ASA in the 3D structure right and the ASA in the extended state. From this, you can calculate the percentage, right? Multiply 100. So then the value is less than 5 percent. Then we call these residues are buried. What's the meaning of buried? They are in the interior core, right? For example, if you uh, see this figure, okay, this is the buried. And you can put the value of 5 to 20 percent, right? This is partially buried, and 20 to 50 as partially exposed, and more than 50 as exposed. 
And this is the general values we use in literature, but this is not very strict here also you can change your cutoff based on the type of applications you use. Generally, if it is less than 5 percent, we use a buried. Some cases they use 2 percent, right, or uh, you get that is changeable, right. So, and 5 to 20 is partially buried, and 20 to 50 is partially exposed, and 50 percent is exposed. So, this is how we can get the actual surface area, convert it to the percentage, and we can do it for the analysis depending upon the location of each residue. So, we summarize what are the various aspects we discussed today. Structure classes. Yeah, different structure classes. What are different structure classes? Scope. Right, all alpha, all beta, <coughs> alpha plus beta, alpha by beta. Right, what are different databases which can give this information? Cat and, yeah. and scope. Right, then we consider contact maps. What is the contact map? This is a plot connecting the contact between two residues in protein structures. Right, in construct any uh, space, we can do, uh, define a distance and different different atoms. And if you are in contact, you put a dot. So, this will give you the 2D representation of the contacts between residues in protein structures, right. right. So, from that can you can define mid long range contact or short range, short range contact or medium range contacts depending upon the residues which are close in space, but how far they are distant in the sequence. So, then we discussed about solvent accessibility, right, how far each residue is accessible to a solvent, right. There are different programs to get the solvent accessibility and we can represent in a pictorial view. So, for example, which is the program to get the pictorial view, A C view, right? And to get the percentage accessibility, so you get the surface area at the buried, the 3D structures, and you can do it for the extended state and get the ratio, right? Then you will get the percentage A C. Based on that, we can classify into buried or partially buried or partially exposed or exposed, right? So you can also derive various other parameters, say contact order or long range order and the buriedness preference of residues to be the interface and the free energy and different types of interactions right and how about the electrostatic or the residues which can form disulfide, disulfide bridges right. So, there are various features right the properties you can derive from the protein 3D structures right and we will uh, look into details right in the following classes. Thank you for your kind attention.